tonight on Haunted Homes, we investigate reports of a haunting in Northfield, Birmingham. I am your voice. A family too terrified to live in their home. She actually woke me up screaming. It was this dark, shadowy thing. His face looks like it's really badly decomposed. Can somebody go to the back bedroom, please? Can somebody? Back bedroom, back bedroom. Back bedroom. He's not feeling very well. Can Mia Dolan, one of Britain's most sought-after psychics, help the Scrivens? He can't really hurt you, just frighten you. He's coming down the stairs. Are you at home alone tonight? Frightened? Do you sleep with the light on? Well, if you do, it seems that you might have good reason to do so, because an incredible one in three of us Brits believes that at one point or another in our lives, we've actually lived with a ghost, be that a hell-raising poltergeist, a sinister phantom, or even a so-called friendly ghost that we more or less treat like a member of the family. Tonight, we visit an ordinary three-bedroom home in Birmingham. Except, for the family who live there, life is anything but ordinary. And that's because they believe they're being stalked by a dark spectre. Divorced mum Lorraine lives with her daughter Emma, a 21-year-old administrator, and son Stephen, a 20-year-old security guard. They live in a quiet suburban street in Northfield. We've lived here now not just over 19 years. Progressively over the last four years, the house hasn't been a very nice house to live in. Unable to work due to ill health, Lorraine spends much of the day alone in the house, often claiming to see shadows and hear footsteps. You just see a shadow as if it was somebody coming down the stairs, and sometimes you go to shout to put the kettle on for you, and there was nobody there. Lorraine, normally a capable woman, is feeling more and more vulnerable in her own home. It sent shivers down my spine, and I, I really did feel nervous actually being in the house and didn't let on to the children. The family say they're being tormented by this presence. From a young age, Stephen claims he's been terrorised in the back bedroom. I used to have horrendous nightmares. Uh, it was quite vivid dreams. It used to get to the point where I was going to freeze fright and I was quite, quite scared and couldn't move. I was shouting, but no words were coming out. It wasn't long after that that they actually swapped bedrooms and it became Emma's room. The back bedroom seems to be a major source of paranormal activity. Emma has suffered but coped until recently. About eight weeks ago, she actually woke me up screaming. It was as if there was somebody standing next to my bed. It was a man. His face looks like... The only way I can describe it is if it's like if somebody's been rotting or it's really badly decomposed. There's no way I'm going back in that bedroom. Close family friend Steve also claims to have witnessed something sinister. Well, I thought I'd seen the door open and the, like a shadow, and all the air stood up on my back, and I had a full rash all over my butter. They say the spirit hasn't just scared them, he's even physically attacked them. Lorraine believes she was pushed down the stairs by an invisible force. I'd started decorating, and to do the hallway, you have to have the two ladders and a plank going across to reach. I was just actually putting the last piece of paper up, and it was as if the ladder just sort of like vibrated slightly, and then the next thing I remember being at the bottom of the stairs. Lorraine says her shoulder was badly injured and has caused her years of pain. I sort of sat there thinking, well, how did that happen? I'd been up and down that ladder onto the plank so many times that day and everything was fine. It was sturdy as far as I was concerned. The family have felt this haunting presence more and more. Two weeks ago, Stephen made a very specific discovery. Um, I was just going around taking different photos of different places. Um, I then took a photo of the dining room from here, and then after I took the photo, I noticed on the actual picture that there was something odd in the mirror. Stephen is sure he has photographic evidence of a sinister figure. I zoomed in on the image, and this is the object that I've seen in the corner of the mirror. It was this dark, shadowy thing. That's when it sort of 
began to hit home that maybe there is something in the house, maybe it is something real. I think the person in the uh, standing next to my bed and the figure in the photograph could be the same thing, yes. We gave the Scrivens a camera to try to record their spirit stalker. Emma is too nervous to stay in the house and has gone to her boyfriend's for the night. I just sat down to do this video diary and I heard the strangest noise coming through the headphones. The more that gets towards the door, it seems to get a bit louder. In an attempt to discover what the noise is, they switch the lights out and investigate further in the dark. And the noise, it's just like a growling, like a gurgling sort of a thing. Maybe it's trying to communicate with us, but what does it really want? The voice they've claimed to have heard tonight is the final straw. They feel there's nowhere left to hide. This phantom man is driving them out. I'm really desperate to get this sorted. Seeing the actual black figure and it's more sinister evil looking, it's really unnerved me. Lorraine Scriven and her children, Emma and Stephen, say they feel like they're living in a real-life horror film. They are desperate for help. Lorraine says she's terrified after her son took a photograph in the family's home that revealed a sinister dark shape in a mirror. And Emma won't sleep in her own bedroom. She's convinced she saw that same dark shape standing just inches from her. They've called in the Haunted Homes team to find out who or what that alarming figure could be. Mia Dolan, one of Britain's most sought-after psychics, heads up the team. A psychic is somebody who covers all areas of the paranormal. It's a paranormal consultant. Very rare to get a serious haunting, but if you do, look for help. In a street, most streets won't have a haunting. In a town, you're going to get a handful. And out of that handful, you're going to get one, maybe two, which I call serious. One of the techniques Mia uses is a spiritual practice called psychometry. Psychometry is picking up information from objects. If somebody's held something a lot, or used something, or worn something, then that's going to, it's going to soak up the vibe anyway. Mia studies the family's most cherished belongings in the hope of getting information about them. It's a great way to get a feel of a property you're going to. It's like the first clues. OK, I want to do some psychometry with these objects. Now, I've not seen them before. Let's start with a chain. This has belonged to two women. With the first woman, it was given as a celebration of relationship. But that was a long time ago. A younger member of the family, another female, received this and keeps it. But it doesn't seem to be worn so much now. Probably more of a keepsake. Nice feelings in that. Now, this photograph of this lady, she's not here anymore. She's in spirit. And she visits, this lady visits the family. She is not the cause of the haunting. She's, she's just a nice, lovely extra. Psychic Mia Dolan claims that she can detect paranormal activity. A supernatural presence, she says, can make her feel off balance, sometimes even sick. On examining the family's belongings, Mia says she's picked up on the fact that the children's deceased grandmother often visits their house to check up on them. Mia is intrigued by the objects and says she now wants to visit the family's home to find out if a more threatening ghost is responsible for the haunting. What will Mia uncover when she finally visits the house? I think it's gone like a step too far for Mum. I'll never forget it. It frightened life out of me. She looks like she's struggling like that, yeah. Lorraine Scrivens is under enormous pressure. Living with what they think is a spectral being is affecting her and her children, Emma and Stephen. All the family believe they're being haunted by a dark figure that's stalking its way through their home, and they are now desperate for something to be done. So, are their claims for real, or is there a more rational explanation for their fears? Well, the next step is to send the haunted homes experts into the house and examine the evidence that the family has collected. 
Mia is driven to the family's home, but apart from the psychometry, she has no prior knowledge of the Scrivens, their house, or even its location. Even as she approaches the family's home, she says that she's starting to get a sense of something unpleasant. Oh, straight away it's like oppressive. It's heavy. Very interested in the stairs. Mia claims to experience a strong sensation on the stairs. There's just a presence is here, and I always know when I'm right near it because my heart rate goes up, and it's like a physical feeling of anxiety without feeling fear. It's a man. It's heavy. After only a few minutes in the house, she's identified an intimidating male presence. Now, this room, it's all still centering out there. It's probably laying in bed, they can see the stairs. Mia says there's a frightening presence in the room. Activity to heat at the bottom of the bed, so some they're getting visitor at the end of the bed. This means that whatever's in this house is taking great pleasure going from room to room, bedroom to bedroom, scaring people. Mia thinks she picked up on some strong psychic activity, but what will our other experts make of the house? Mia is accompanied by our very own paranormal investigator, Mark Webb. The only time really that I've been scared was at uh, a haunted location within Britain where it's reputed that there's a very nasty spirit and I actually felt that he was pacing backwards and forwards past the door. He actually said that he was going to hurt us if we didn't leave. Skeptic Chris French, professor of paranormal psychology, will look for a rational explanation. I see my role at the vigils as being to actually look at the way that the other people who are involved in the vigil actually interact with each other. A lot of the kinds of experiences that are going to be reported will be down to suggestion. Basically, people kind of getting each other psyched up. Our experts are keen to examine the house, and in particular, Stephen's mysterious photograph. And you were standing here? I was standing yeah. here, yeah. Though I was not reflecting into the mirror whatsoever. The photograph well, that Stephen's yeah. got, I'd, I'd like to uh, get that onto a computer and get that blown up and have a, have a really good look. I mean, be, it would be quite interesting from? to see if we could actually kind of try and Re you know, yeah, recreate, recreate that. it. And yeah. then if we could, then you've obviously got a much better chance of yeah. figuring out what it might be. Yeah. After Mia and the experts have toured the house, Mia meets the family to discuss her findings. What was interesting for me is that normally it'd be a certain room would be the centre, but to me it was a stairway, and that everything's coming from the stairway. What I picked up in your room was that you had been scared yeah, by something by the that's bed. that's why I won't go back in there. As well as the psychic activity in the house, Mia also tells them her findings from the objects she previously examined. I was looking at some stuff earlier to do with the psychometry. Yeah. There's a picture, the picture of the, the lady in the brass. Yeah. That was a lovely, warm feeling coming from her. But she's not haunting you, OK? <laughs> so she'd have come back to say hello, but she's yeah. not haunting you. She wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't have um, to do that. Joke. But with you, it's the, so the lady, this must be your grandmother, she no. is as if you've been very sad. And I, I don't know why you've been sad. You OK, darling? But the sadness is it's, it's going. It's going to move on. It'll be fine. But it's, it's, what I'm getting is new relationships to with lightening up. Everything's going to be fun. OK? But you have been very lost in your own way. And because of all this going on and all the angst, it can make it more susceptible to be seeing things and experiencing things. It'd be fine, we're sorting. What you've got here is somebody saying, this is mine, I'm scaring you because I don't want you here. I believe somebody still thinks it's their place, and that's what we've got the problem with. Now, it's not evil, it's just a strong presence. Right. Doesn't want to hurt you, it's just trying to get rid of you. Right. You know, <laughs> maybe not very comforting. Yeah. Mm. But the reality is, it's quite easy to, well, hopefully, it should be quite easy to send over. Right. But I'll put it this way, I won't be leaving before it is. That's good. Okay. Yeah, we'll hold you to that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely hold you to that. The family are amazed about how much Mia has picked up on about what they claim has been going on in the house. Um, surprised, very shocked that she's got quite a lot right without knowing anything really. Not so sure about the bit where she said it's not. I don't believe her where she says it's not sinister and it's you know not out to her. It's that's a hard one to sort of, yeah. when you've lived here, to so actually think that it's photo, not. So and after the photograph, the photograph doesn't look as if it's not sinister. 
Mia is quite concerned that this spectre is not about to give up trying to force them out of the house. It's very oppressive, the presence, and it's not something that um, could possibly be, be left with, and it would certainly affect the family badly. But also, I didn't want to scare the family or wind them up when I was talking to them. Will the photograph hold the answer as to who this sinister man is and what he's got against the family? This is the original photograph. Having examined the digital picture, Mark shows Chris his findings. Now, I'm going to tell you what I can see a face here. You're basically saying that that's a face there. Yes. And this is some kind of cowl or cloak cowl. or something. Cowl. It, it's yeah. certainly a black shape right. that I can't explain. I cannot replicate this, this photograph. The fact that we've just got it in the bottom corner of the mirror suggests that, you know, we are looking at a reflection of something yes. that was there in the room. For me, that's a very, very good photograph. One sinister photograph, three terrified people. After talking to the family, the next stage of our investigation can begin. In a vigil, our three experts will spend the night with the Scrivens family in their home in an attempt to find proof of paranormal activity. Our investigator, Mark Webb, has all the latest technology to record hard evidence of a ghost. Meanwhile, Mia says she's more concerned for the family. She wants to know why a spirit is intimidating them so intensely. And our psychologists and skeptic, Dr. Chris French, will be on hand all night as well. He says he's determined to offer a logical explanation to anything that might happen during the night. Mia and the experts discuss the best way to proceed. They talk about the equipment that Mark should use and where they're most likely to capture the sound or image of a ghost. So this one's been designed to pick up on any sounds that have been made that we wouldn't hear. I'm not convinced that we could ever, just on the basis of this kind of apparatus, say that's something paranormal happening. I could be levitating around this room and you'd be saying it's not paranormal. No, that I would say was paranormal. <laughs> In spite of Chris's criticisms, Mark still sets up his high-tech equipment around the house. These are motion detectors. Should anyone break the beam of these, it will set off an alarm. In addition to his usual equipment, there's also a thermal imaging camera. The camera is able to detect variation in temperature, which may indicate paranormal activity. Outside the house, in a Winnebago, set up to monitor the vigil, skeptic Chris watches the proceedings carefully. For tonight's vigil, static cameras are set up in the various rooms around the house. Mia and Lorraine take their positions in Lorraine's bedroom. Emma's petrified of being alone in her room. She insists that family friend Steve must stay with her. Accompanied by Mark, Stephen takes up position in what they believe to be centre of the paranormal activity, the stairwell. With everyone in position and all the equipment up and running, the house is plunged into darkness at precisely midnight. There's a feeling of anticipation in the air. Emma has been in her room for 31 minutes now. I've got a sicky feeling. I know my mouth's gone dry and I feel a bit faint. In Lorraine's room, they claim to experience something unusual. It's really strange because as I'm looking that way, you can see it getting dark and I look around, but the lights are there. Yeah, keep noticing. They both appear to be seeing a dark shadow in the door. All I can see is that side of the door frame. There's like a black shadow that comes across. Yeah, yeah, I can see it there. Stephen is now alone as Mark has gone to check his equipment. Since the light's been turned off, the only thing that I've really noticed is sun changes in temperature. One minute it's really hot. The next is goes really chilly. Meanwhile, in Lorraine's room, their eyes are drawn to the doorway. Is the evil presence roaming the house? Did you see it change shape? Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Okay. Yeah. I am petrified. <laughs> Do you want to change places? Yeah. 
Lorraine's not the only person feeling uncomfortable. Emma also changes places next door. Did you see Elijah as well? Lorraine and Mia think that they've seen the shadow disappear through the door. It was like uh, something in the top left hand corner and it went sort of across that way. Mia goes to the landing to investigate. I'll stand there for a second and see if we both see it again. The thermal imaging camera flashes pink, showing a fluctuation in temperature. Can you see anything yet? Alone in the room, Lorraine is terrified as she sees the shadow return. I saw it. No, I can't see it. Too, it's not happening when I'm out here. Yeah. Come back in. Suddenly, Steve says he feels unwell. Oh, yeah. Sickness may be a sign of paranormal activity. Mum, somebody. Yeah. Uncle Steve. Yeah. He's not feeling very well. So, can somebody go to the back bedroom, please? Can somebody? Yeah. Can somebody quickly go to the back bedroom, please? Wrong. Back, bedroom. back bedroom. Back bedroom. He's not feeling very well. Despite claims of being unwell, Steve refuses to leave Emma's side. <sighs> <laughs> Emma seems completely traumatised by being back in her bedroom and the pressure is taking its toll. As soon as I sat down here, which is where I had this this dream or whatever it was before, I had this cold, just down this one side, this cold chill. You know, that sometimes you get a feeling in like the old saying, somebody's just stepped over your grave. Lorraine and Mia are convinced that they saw the dreaded shadow enter Emma's room. I'm not being funny, but that's the way that thing went. I've gone cold. I can feel your cold. I've gone cold. Things are getting so tense in the house, the family ask to leave after only 50 minutes. Mia and Lorraine try to convince Chris about what they've seen. It wasn't just like a, like a mm. cloud or shadow. It was like mist, but really very big particles. So visible particles. That was not imagination. So then we had to move places because she was on the outside. And by the time the whole bed was shaken, she was shaking so much. <laughs> but from my point of view, that was amazing. But to go Lorraine there, suggests that the experts go back to the bedroom. I want to go in there and, uh, you know, see, see if we can all see something happening in there. Are you on there, man? The others take refuge in the Winnebago. I think she's quite scared. She's <laughs> looking very, very drained. Like Mia's picking something up. Oh, Heart rate's just started to go up. I just see something at the corner of the door go down. Mom doesn't look well. Wrong with her head. Yeah. The tension in the room seems to be taking its toll on Lorraine. I think it's gone like a step too far for Mum. She was all right with it before. Over the last few minutes, I started to get that intense like pressure on top of my head again. Pick it up she's struggling. She looks like she's struggling like that, yeah. Lorraine says she's physically and emotionally exhausted. So they decide to end the vigil. The vigil seems to have had a dramatic effect on Lorraine. OK. Mm. It's not a headache, it's just... Not a lot of pressure or something. Mm. Mark, intrigued by the fluctuation in the temperature, decides to investigate immediately. The temperature's dropping. It's still dropping to 24 degrees. I sense, I don't know, I don't know what, why my head started. I mean, it's still not right now, but in that bedroom, it was just as if it was, yeah. It wasn't banging, it was just like it was being squashed. This room f feels physically colder, yet the temperature is, is rising. It's 23.4, 23.5. The thermal imaging camera supports Mark's findings about the temperature changes. Back out on the landing, temperatures drop in 23.9, 23.8, 3 is quite bizarre. As the night of the vigil draws to a close, it seems that most of the group believe there is a presence in the house.
the cold light of day, Mia and the family reflect on the vigil. I just can't explain the experience. It was... I'll never forget it. It frightened the life out of me, but I'll never forget what I saw. Lorraine tries to make sense of what went on by telling Emma and Stephen. But I was amazed that within seconds of us seeing it go in your direction, you shouted and says, can somebody come in with, you know, something wrong? Until we actually, I start the clearing, we won't actually know the identity of it. That's the problem, you know. Right. That's the one we've got to get rid of. Have last night's events altered the skeptics' views? I personally didn't experience anything that suggested to me that there was any anything paranormal happening whatsoever. And I think what was happening was that we were we were all pretty much seeing more or less what we expected to see. It's been a long night for everyone, but for Emma and Lorraine, it's been particularly harrowing. Lorraine and Mia both claim to have seen a dark shape on the landing that then moved into Emma's bedroom. Lorraine became very emotional. And Steve, the skeptic of the group, complained of feeling unwell. Meanwhile, downstairs, Mark Webb, our paranormal investigator, observed changes in temperature, changes that were also recorded by our thermal imaging camera. Our psychologist, Chris French, though, is unimpressed by any of that. He doesn't think that any of it amounts to hard evidence of a haunting. But with the family and the majority of the investigation team believing that there is something supernatural in the house, Mia prepares to confront the ghost. During the course of this, you may have some strange experiences. We'll see what happens when Mia actually tries to summon the spirit to her. Very angry, trying to ask him why he wants to frighten you. Stories of demons, ghosts and evil possession stretch right back through history. And in all that time, various methods have been used to get rid of them. It's no surprise that most people aren't prepared to live with a ghost in their homes for very long. Mia believes that when a spirit is detected, it has to be helped to the other side. She says they simply don't belong in this world, they belong in the spirit world and need help to get there. But even she can't predict what could happen. Now, as you know, last night we did the vigil. Tonight we get rid of it. Now, during the course of this, you may have some strange experiences. Bear with me. Got it. It's coming down the stairs. It's a man. Not of this time. We're going back quite a way. Um, wearing like a, a cloak or robe, long. There's some uh, damage to the side of his face. This is how he would have died. Very bad tempered, very angry. I'm trying to ask him why he wants to frighten you. I'm not really getting a response. It's more just because he can. He's coming into the room now. He's angry, but it's not with you. It's just that he can see you, he can communicate in ways with you that other people can't. But he wants to go over, my hairs are starting to go up now. He want, does want to go over. It's not gonna be that much, hopefully, of a problem. I'm gonna send him over, okay? Mia appears to be in a trance. She says a special clearing prayer. De profundus clamave ad de domini, domini exaudi vocium, mi arm fiant oris du incendentis in vocium de capitonis miae. Mia says the spirit has now dispersed. I am shaking, I don't always shake. That's not shaking because I'm scared. Mm. That's because my heart rate was going and I could have, it was on my chest. Okay. Is your head okay? It's just gone. Just gone? It's like poof. The environment's calming down now. I'm calming down. That's not fear. 
That's just energy. The wasn't evil. He's been around for a long time. You're not the only home he's been to. I'm drawn to you because you're all sensitive and easy to sort of really communicate. But he was very angry. So he was either murdered or killed. But it was very quick. Gone. Finished. Finito. You'll sleep better tonight. Mia claims that during the clearing, the ghost actually spoke directly to her. He told her he was haunting the Scrivens because he was angry. He died unexpectedly and wasn't yet ready to move on to the next world. Well, without a name, of course, it was very difficult to research that story. But despite that, for their part, the Scrivens believed what Mia told them. It's been two months since the clearing. We've returned to the Scrivens' home to find out if Mia successfully removed the menacing presence. There's just no question that whatever it was here, it's definitely been sent on its way. Definitely not a sign of anything. It does feel a lot different, and we all know that it's all it's gone, and hopefully it's never going to come back. But is Emma now capable of sleeping in her own room? The first night was hard to get back into my room because it was like my subconscious telling me, oh, it's still here. But after that, just come in as if nothing's ever happened. And I just think it's so nice that I can do that now in my own house. Thanks to Mia, the Scrivens have been given a fresh start. After all these years, it's such a wonderful feeling to actually think that our house is now our house and we are not sharing it with somebody else. I'd like to thank Mia from the bottom of our hearts for all that she did do. Um, it just means so much to us after living with it for so long. And it's just changed our lives completely. But I just don't know, words just wouldn't express how grateful that we really are to her. Lorraine Scriven says her family is now rid of the dark figure that she believes her son Stephen photographed in that mirror. And as for Emma, well, she is now back in her bedroom, no longer fearful that she'll be sleeping with a spectre hovering over her. So, thankfully, one happy family, and maybe a ghost that's been moved on to where it belongs. Perhaps haunted homes are more than just the stuff of films and fiction. And if you believe tonight's family, then the nightmare of living with an unwanted guest could happen to just about anyone. Sleep well. Good night. Sunday on ITV2. She heard scratching on the roof, found the body suspended upside down over the car. That sounds like, yeah, I know, the hook man legend. The hook is a source of his power. If we find the hook, we stop the hook man. Supernatural at nine.